How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, this one I'm going to be explaining how I made this uh, parkour command block type video that also ended up being a loop that I posted on my uh, TikTok channel. So this video actually got the most likes that I've ever received on a video, which is pretty cool to see. I'm pretty sure it's over 500,000 right now with uh, 2.3 million views, which is pretty crazy. And uh, a lot of people asked uh, for tutorials or comment something along the lines of like this probably took way too much time but I'm gonna try my best to explain how I made this and also just to show relatively how simple it was to make believe it or not because this only utilized one type of command and that's the fill command so I'm gonna try my best to explain how to do this and um, hopefully you guys will be a little bit more familiar with commands and command blocks after this so I'll jump right into it first thing is that this lever is connected to redstone that's linked up to these command blocks. Now this might look a little bit complicated, but essentially all it is is the fact that this redstone is active and touching all of these blocks. And the repeaters just extend the signal, so whenever the signal runs out just from using redstone dust, if you put a repeater down, it'll extend the signal. So that's that's all that those are for, so it doesn't really, it's not too complicated in terms of uh, redstone mechanics. So the first thing that happens whenever these are powered on is these five stone pillars spawn and then the grass at the end breaks. So essentially what this is is just the fill command being used and how the fill command works is you just need six coordinates, essentially each corner or you could do like a line if you keep some of the coordinates the same. So it's just six coordinates of where you want blocks to be built and after the six coordinates you put the block type you want and then the data value. Now I'm not going to go too far into that zero after the stone, it's called a data value and it's just used to separate different kinds of blocks. So if I did like stone brick, zero would just be a regular stone brick, but if I did a different number which you would have to look up, you can get cracked stone brick or mossy and stuff like that. So essentially if you just want like different types of blocks, you just got to look up this, uh, the data values for them. So essentially that first one there is just going to fill two blocks here. So those coordinates are going to be this coordinate here. And then the bottom half of your player will be the second coordinate, which will fill a block here, but you need this coordinate. So that's going to be 15, 21, 64, 204, 15, 21, 65, 204. And that's what this command is going to say. And then essentially each one up is just going to have a higher uh, Y coordinate on each one. So that's just the same coordinates. So you just need to map out each one. I'll let you see them here. And it's all the same. So essentially the timing is all in this section of the uh, command blocks, the delay in ticks. So every 20 ticks I believe is one second, but you don't really essentially need to know that to do this. So what I like to do whenever I make these is I put these all in a line, have all the commands ready, and then I just throw in some delay in ticks. So this one's 20, 30, 40, 50, and then that one's gonna be 60. So how that works is, this one's going to go after 20 ticks, 30, 40, 50, 60. And if the timing doesn't work out whenever you're actually running it, like I've run into whenever I was actually making this, you just got to uh, tweak the ticks to be lesser further apart. So if you want the timing to be just right whenever you jump, you'll have to make them shorter. But I gave myself some lead way to make some mistakes. So whenever I do it, I can stop, jump, stop, jump. Or you could just do one that you could continuously do if you just time it right. It's all about the delays and uh, the command blocks. So that's essentially it for the pillar spawning here. I'll explain how the grass uh, the grass blocks are going to break right here. So essentially, these nine blocks are what I want to break after this last pillar spawns. So I need the coordinates from here to here because wherever you're standing, it'll be one up. So I just take this corner and this corner, and I'll show you the command actually. So it's going to be the six coordinates, it's just the corner, the x, y, z, the x, y, z, and then I did air as the block, which is essentially just going to erase what's already there, and then zero as the data value for air, and then the destroy part is just a little bit different. It's going to actually break the blocks and leave behind dirt that can be picked up. I just thought that added a different aspect. If you leave out destroy, it's obviously not going to do anything. It's just going to spawn air there and you won't get that effect, but I just figured it looked interesting to see the blocks actually break. And you can actually see them fall. So that's essentially all that command is. And then that was timed at, let's see, 90 ticks. So this one, the last pillar spawns at 60 and then it actually breaks open at 90. So the timing itself is all going to be 
pretty much dependent on whatever you're building. And the ticks are just going to keep getting higher and higher if you do a continuous one. So that's just how the timing worked out for that one. So the part with the dispensers and the air shooting is a little bit complicated. I'll do my best to explain it because uh, it's essentially the fill replace command which can be a little bit tedious at first but it's, it's really not too bad. So essentially what I did was I took each corner from here to here that encompasses uh, the entirety of this row of dispensers and I wanted each one to fire at a different tick but each row is on the same. So this row fires on the same tick and this row fires then that row and so on. So essentially I just took these coordinates, this one, and used the slash fill replace command which will replace these gold blocks with redstone blocks and I'll show you what the command looks like. So that first one is going to be this row here. Let me edit this so yeah, that will come back. So it's going to say after the command I, or the coordinates I entered it's going to say redstone block which is the block to spawn in place of the gold block and the data values at the uh, end of each one are just going to be zero because there's not different types of redstone block or different types of gold blocks. So essentially that's how that command works and then each one is a tick after the other so that one's 93, I think it's actually two, yeah 95, 97. And the coordinates, the only difference between the coordinates in all of these is the Y coordinate. You can actually see that in the chat there. They go from, let's see, 59, 59 to 58, 58, 60, 60, 61. So see how it rapidly went down. It's kind of in the video and it's, you don't really need to understand this if you want to make something like this. I just thought this part was pretty cool to see all the arrows uh, spawning. And then you'll notice at the end the gold blocks are replaced and that's essentially just the opposite of the command that spawned in the redstone block. So that's right here. So that's going to be block replace redstone block and that's just going to take all the gold blocks and uh, or all the redstone blocks at that point and replace them with the gold blocks to reset it. So after that you'll notice that the stone brick floor right here is going to break out and that's going to be the same as the one that broke out the uh, ceiling to this place. So that's going to be from this coordinate to this coordinate go in here and show you it. I believe it's the last one here. So after all the uh, dispensers fire, that happens at, oh, not that one, not that. So that happens at 105 and then the floor is going to open up at 110 ticks. And essentially this is the same command as the other one, it's going to be an air destroy command which is just going to break the blocks out just to add that uh, effect. I'm pretty sure it makes the noise of the blocks breaking too. So then after that was this jump here that goes all the way down and there was a slime block here that gets replaced by lava and I'll explain how I did that in a second. I just reset it. So once all these spawn, this block breaks. Once you shoot, that breaks, I fall and there's a slime block right there. So that part, this timing was pretty strict obviously because I got the block to spawn, bounce, and then the lava to spawn. So all that takes is this coordinate right here, I have to go in the lava to do it. 15, 21, 26, 189. Okay, so that's this command here, you can see 15, 21, 26, 189, and then you gotta repeat it because the command requires that it's two sets of coordinates even if it's just one block, and then slime zero for a regular slime block. Now the delays and ticks on this one was originally 130 actually. But let's say whenever I was first making this, I wasn't sure how long I wanted it. So I knew that this one right here is going to break that floor at 110, and then I'm going to fall. And I could just guess that I'm probably going to fall for maybe a second. So let's say I just did like 120 here. All you essentially have to do is just run through the whole thing and make sure the timing works out right. I'm go here. See, that still worked out. It was a little bit early, so if I wanted to be a little bit more risky and not spawn until I'm a lot closer, I think I originally actually did 130 for this one. So now that that's at 130, it's going to spawn a little bit later. So I can go ahead and try it out now. See, that was a little bit too late. It all depends on, uh, you just gotta keep running through it and make sure the timing's right. So 130 might have been a little bit too late. I could do even 125 if I wanted, but you get the point. So hopefully by this point you're seeing the pattern of this whole thing. Uh, this whole room here wasn't filled with lava until that slime block broke, so I just took this corner all the way to that corner and used the fill command for lava. I'll show that. Make a quicker way to do it. So 
had the slime block spawning and then the lava right after and I used the destroy part just to get the block to break but you don't really have to do that and I just did that right after this command goes off so 130 and 140 by that time you're already in the air and you'll be away from the lava the next part after the slime block spawns and you're bouncing up is that this block catches you and then these slime blocks spawn right before I jump on into them so I can get down into this area. So the timing for this obviously is just the same, you just gotta keep testing it. Uh, this Just use a fill command from this corner to this corner. And what I wanted to happen was all I had to do is jump off this and hold in the analog stick for each one of these. So I just pretty much mentally marked where I want the bounce to be and then all I gotta do is place them and find out where. So if I didn't, if I bounced off this one and wanted to land somewhere around here, I would just jump on this, jump here, and then mentally note about where I would end up and then just build a wall and mark it. And then all you need to do is take the coordinates of each one and then throw them in the command blocks and I'll show you what those look like real quick. So this is after the lava spawns and then this would be the stone brick spawning. So I think after the bounce, let's see, the lava spawns at 140 and then this actually spawns at 150, and then I give myself time to jump onto the first slime block, which is 182, second set of slime blocks, 200, 222, you get the point. So essentially, if you want to make something like this and you have to time that right, you, I can't give you obviously exact numbers because it's going to be different for everybody, but essentially that's how you do it. You just got to keep running through it and uh, tweaking the ticks uh, depending on whether you're bouncing up high or you want something to catch you and just anything like that. It's really... It's really not that complicated once you get the, the hang of it. So slowly approaching end here after the series of slime blocks spawn, you'll notice that this uh, this whole room opens up here. And how I did this essentially was this whole area right here is already built under there. And then the only part that's actually, oh, these are barriers. The only part that's actually used in the commands is gonna be right here. So what I did was I had uh, this area get filled with stone brick from this corner to this corner so that'll essentially just look like this and then the tick right after just destroys these two layers so I'm pretty sure that's from it's gonna be from this corner to this corner so essentially that'll destroy this row and whatever blocks were here and again that's just timed right after this last one happened I just jumped and just kept tweaking it until it opened up right when I came through and you could make the timing pretty strict if you wanted you can make it so whenever you hit this one and bounce, it would just open up right before you hit it. So it just depends on how you want it to look. Mine, I think, had a little bit of leadway into it. So down here, this set of commands is relatively simple. I decided to put a different source uh, so that way I could reset the ticks. These ones are obviously gonna be at a lower tick instead of just continuing off them off one source. because That's gonna make the timing really strict if you do it all off one redstone pool. So if you activate like a new redstone source throughout the thing, you could uh, kind of reset how you want the commands to come in. So this one, I just did a fill command for each one. I think I did threes, yeah. So each one has three, so I just took the the coordinates from here to here and then here this block to here and then you can get it all the way to the end uh, this one obviously just took a little bit of tweaking with delays that did 8 ticks 15 25 35 and so on so essentially I wanted it to be so I was sprinting and I didn't have to worry about stopping or doing anything but sprinting and then right at the end here I used the destroy command from this block to this coordinate which is essentially going to break out the wall and then let me show you and then this very last coordinate is uh just going to refill that block that was broken out so essentially this thing just resets itself every time and i also took the coordinates from here all the way to here and did a air command i'll show you that one so the last part of this is kind of tricky and I'll try to explain it as best I can and that's trying to get everything to reset after you flip the switch again. So once I flip this, I need all of these pillars to be deleted, I need the grass blocks to respawn, I need this whole room to be just completely cleared out of lava, slime, and stone brick. And I need uh, this bottom floor to be refilled with the blocks that were getting destroyed during the, the course. So these are all looked up, uh, linked up to an inverted signal. 
And all that means is whenever this is on and turning all of these blocks on, it's connected to a redstone torch and these are all going to be off. So this signal is turning this torch off and keeping all of these off. So whenever I turn this switch off, technically, it's going to turn all of these on. So that's what that looks like. So what that did, you could actually see all the commands going off there. That deleted the pillars, uh, respawned the grass blocks, respawned this here, and then cleared out this room. But it also kept all these lanterns in here, and I'll explain how I did that. So, let's see. So the first one here is just going to be an error command that's going to delete uh, those coordinates here, I believe, are from, let me see, probably from around right here, like this corner. Let me get something that would be easy to see. So from this corner to... I probably did right here, just probably right up to there. So that's going to delete from that corner to that corner, anything, and then it'd be replaced by air. So that just resets that. And then I just took the coordinates from where the uh, grass blocks were destroyed, copied them, and put grass instead of air. It's just going to respawn those. Same thing for here, just whatever coordinates were used to delete these, same ones, just put stone brick instead of air. So how I cleared this room out without deleting any of the lanterns was the fill replace command. So I essentially just did air, replace stone brick, replace slime, replace lava, all in uh, three separate commands. So I took the coordinates from here, this corner, all the way to just however high that block was, probably till right here. It doesn't really matter as long as it's all encompassing of everything I wanted to delete. Right here, this will replace all the lava in the area. This one's going to replace all those slime blocks. And this one's going to uh, replace that stone brick there. And then also had a few more that's just replaced the, uh, the stone brick at the very end because whenever this is activated, those uh, stone brick... I'll show you. The stone brick in this room that's over here uh, needs to be respawned. So that's essentially what that did. It just took these... Uh, 18 blocks here and just refill them before the lava can go down there And that's pretty much it to reset the whole thing and then this one just had I explained earlier its own reset mechanism right inside So you can just include the blocks that will reset it inside uh, Of like the sequence like I did here to make it simple, but I just did um I just kind of built this uh, step by step like everything that needed to be placed and also needed deleted I added so I added these five pillars and then I threw this command in after because I just did it in like a sequence so every time I uh, wanted to test this out it would also reset itself which is probably the best way to go about doing this because you don't want to have to be like deleting all these blocks as you kind of run through and see if your timing's correct for everything. This is pretty much going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something about commands and uh, hopefully you can try to make something like this. I promise it's really not as complicated as you think once you get into it. It is rather time consuming but it's definitely worth it because it's really cool to, to run through these and like test each part and then once it works out it just it's just really cool to, to have like a fully completed course like this whenever you're done with it. But uh, hopefully you guys learned something and now you kind of know how I made that video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek of something that I'm going to be posting uh, hopefully soon here. I'm actually going to do a collab with another uh, Minecraft TikToker for this one. So I made uh, this one that has a lot more commands and it's a lot more complex than the last one. I'll show it to you. I'm just going to give you a little bit of it because um, it's pretty complicated and just from that you can see there's a lot of commands in this one. So this is essentially what I like. I'm not going to show the whole thing though because obviously I want everyone to see it in the post, but this is uh, just the beginning parts of it. This one took a lot more commands and a lot different timing than the other one, so this is about all I'll show. You guys can see the rest in a future post, so just look out for that.